Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are the nine books that I've read so far in January. I've had a phenomenal reading month so far this year. I would recommend every single one of the books that I'm about to talk about today. I'm so excited, let's get into them. As always, I will be talking about these books in the order that I read them in January and also, the links to all these books, if you're interested in them, will be linked down below in the description for you. The first book that I ended up reading in 2023 is Mafia Mistress by Mila Finelli. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. I know there's like five books out in this series and I've been wanting to read it for a while. My friends rave about this series and Mila Finelli's books and I personally wanted to read it because Mila Finelli is a pen name for Joanna Shoup, which is a historical romance author that I love. So I needed to pick up her mafia ones. And this was so fun. Francesca is our heroine in here. And I think she is 18 and her family is a part of the mafia, specifically like her dad, but she doesn't want to be in that life. She wants to go off to college and make a working career. She wanted the dreams that her mother ended up not having. Her mother passed away when the heroine Francesca was young. But things get thrown for a loop when her father tells her one day she is now arranged to marry a mafia man. Fausto, who is a mafia boss from Italy, ends up coming over to America and making this deal with the heroine's father, like, your daughter is going to marry my son. And so he takes her to Italy to marry his son but then while she's staying at their house with him um she starts developing these hot and heavy feelings for her fiance's dad <laughs> the dad also feels the same way so fausto starts feeling his own feelings towards the heroine and this may or may not turn into you're not gonna marry my son now you're gonna be with me instead mafia romance this was fun it's a fun read um i kind of just didn't take it seriously at all it kind of read like 365 days like the movie <laughs> I know there's a book for that. I haven't read the book, so I've only seen the movie. But it kind of read like that, like how bizarre and like just wild it can be at times and absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like this heroine at one point like even goes on a yacht, his yacht. <laughs> so there's like that whole like, yacht scene. It reminded me of 365 Days. Okay, this book also ends on kind of like a cliffhanger where book number two will wrap up Frankie and uh, Fausto's story. The way this one ended definitely intrigued me to read the second one and it's currently sitting on my Libby right now. So I plan to pick it up fairly soon. You may or may not see it in my like end of the month wrap up, but this was just so entertaining. Like it's one of those entertaining books that like is ridiculous, but I had fun. I had so much fun reading this, but also like, don't mistake. I would not want a Fausto in my life. Like please in real life. No, thank you. No, I'm good. <laughs> Tropes for this one. You have age gap. It's a duet. Um, it's forced proximity because she's staying in his house with him and his son. Um, it's a mafia romance. You have a possessive hero and touch her and die to the max. I decided to pick up a novella next. This is Dad Bod Dreams by Cassie Mint. I really enjoy these dad bod like romances. This is a series where like every book is written by a different author. There's a lot of books in the series, like 20. Every single one is written by a different author and it's like dad bod blank. So I've already read Dad Bod Wingman, which was a great friend still the first one. Basically each book in this like companion series, like they don't interconnect or like have anything to do with each other. Like the characters don't interweave the main plot line is just like it's about men who are plus size which you don't read about that in romances at all like barely at all i'm trying to get more recommendations after this book i literally went and searching on amazon for more recommendations most of the ones that i was finding was the ones in this series like dad bod blank you know like those kinds of books but i'm wanting to find some more because i want to see all types of body diversity because like i'm not like obsessed with like completely abbed men like I don't care what someone looks like with their body and I'm attracted to a hefty man okay so I want to read about books with men like that I've already read the just cane ones and stuff like that so like I want more anyway so I picked this one up this one is a forbidden romance it's about Clementine and Duke and they have been hardcore pining after each other for years however there's a huge problem uh Clementine is the best friend to Duke's daughter so this is best friend's dad romance. It's a short little novel, so I don't want to spoil anything else, but if you want like a forbidden romance where she is pining after her best friend's father, like pick this one up. Tropes in here, age gap, obviously best friend's parent, 
a bigger hero, Forbidden Romance. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There is Longing and it is a novella. One of my prompts every single month for 2024 like TBR videos is to read like a book that continues a series. So my pick for January was Omega's Obsession by Sarah Blue, which is the next book in the Heat Haven series, which is a Omegaverse romance series. Now I normally don't like why choose romances because I want everyone to be together. This book, huh, it filled my heart with so much joy because everyone was together, okay? So I believe there are three guys in this situation and our heroine. So our heroine is an Omega and she has been hardcore crushing on her um, brother's best friend for years, like absolute years. And then she realizes that he's going to apply to be at um, Heat Haven, which is a place where like alphas and other like betas and stuff like service Omega's in their heat, right? And she's like, oh no, 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 like I'm gonna be this person. So she decides to apply and the hero sees her at Heat, Ho heat Haven. He's like, what are you doing? And this is the romance between her, her childhood best friend, like crush, and like the two men that are part of his pack that he's like also in love with. So it's four people falling in love with each other. It is so fun. This is the first time that I loved every single character in a poly romance. There have been poly romances where like, eh, I don't really care about that one person or eh, I forgot about that person. No, I loved every single one of these people. They were so fantastic to read about. So if you're like me and you don't really like why choose romances, but you maybe like want to find ones that are for you. Like I want to love these romances so badly. Like I do, I, I, I want to because there's so many great monster romances, Omegaverse books that I've heard about, but I'm not a why choose girly where there's one woman and like a bunch of guys like that I don't really care about and there's too many men to even like count and I want that deep emotional connection with a couple and these four people go through that. They really do. Four tropes in this one. <laughs> it's a poly romance. There's caretaking scenes, childhood crush. There are knots. If you know, you know. Um, <laughs> there's multiple point of views. Uh, there are piercings and it's taboo, okay? <laughs> this next one, I cannot stop smiling. I love this book so much. This is Whispers of the Deep by Emma Hamm. This is the first book in her newest series, which is the Deep Water series. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk too much about this book because I'm having a whole entire new releases vlog coming out at the end of the month where I deep dive into this book and a few other new releases that I'm going to be reading in the month of January. Um, so I don't want to have this whole video be about this book, but this is a book that I read as an ARC. So I read it as an advanced reader copy. Emma Ham sent it my way. So thank you so much, Emma Ham, for sending it my way. I love this book. If you love monster romances, if you love fantasy romances, if you love like mermaids, like this is enemies to lovers to the core. Our heroine is a human who lives in this underwater like city dome that humans have created on this planet because it's not safe to live above the water because there's hurricanes, tsunamis, everything and the like. So they have to build an underwater city. It's been there for like hundreds of years and the merfolk in this in the ocean hate how these cities have been built because they have to build these cities, they have to decimate part of the ocean in order to do it and they cannot stand it. They're ruining their land. And so for years, these mermaids have tried to ruin their cities, break them down. And the story starts out with our heroine who's an engineer in one of the cities fixing up like a crack in the glass to make sure it doesn't flood, right? And our hero is one of the mermaids tasked to take the humans down. And he notices what she's fixing and he's like, a crack. And he decides to break the glass and possibly kill our heroine. <laughs> That's how this book starts out. And then it turns into a kidnapping romance that's filled with like the language barrier trope, but then it turns into touch her and die. It's beautiful. I love this book so much. Again, I'm gonna talk about this book more and my feelings in the vlog that'll come out towards the end of the month. But um, I thought I would just list off the tropes for you. First, I have assassin turned lover. The next one is two Ds. If you know what two Ds means, he has two Ds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, we have capture captive caretaking scenes, it's enemies to lovers, fantasy romance, forbidden, kidnapping, language barrier, a mermaid, monsters, the never been kissed trope, the hero has never been kissed before. And these two, I feel like are total soulmates. So I love this book, five stars. I will shout loud and proud about it from the rooftops. This is my favorite book of the year so far. I was in the monster romance mood after reading that book and just decided to pick up an audiobook on Libby that came in, in on my holds. So this is the 
Ballast, Ballast Spride. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. Um, this is by Sarah Ivy Hill. It's a second book in her Salt Planet Giant series. So I've read the first one in the series and I, I've talked about it before on my channel. The first one, the hero is red. He's a giant alien creature and the heroine fits in the palm of his hands. That's how big she is. And it's their romance. So this is another one of those. You have one of those giant alien dudes, but he's blue. And the heroine again is a human woman who can fit in the palm of his hand. <laughs> And he just so happens to be her bodyguard on top of that. So y'all know me, I'm a sucker for monster books, for bodyguard books. Like this was so fun. Like, don't worry, this giant and human definitely find ways to make this relationship work. It takes place on like a boat throughout the majority of this book because this heroine is being shipped off to marry somebody for an alliance. And the hero is like gonna protect her throughout the journey. But then like he finally admits the feelings that he has towards her and she finds like, oh my gosh, I think I've been feeling the same way for years and Mm -mm -mm. it's really fun <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous but like it's fun I also like laughed throughout this book like a lot because <laughs> it's so ridiculous but it's such a fun book but like it put a smile on my face um so tropes for this one adoption the heroine is adopted by these like vampire moth creatures it's very interesting I hope we get like a book or something by Sarah Ivy Hill incorporating those creatures because I want more. You have a bodyguard romance, height difference, of course. Um, hero Falls First, it's on Kindle Unlimited. Um, it's a monster romance, the hero, hero is her protector and there is a size difference, okay? <laughs> Another fantastic book that I ended up reading is The Tyrant Alpha's Rejected Mate by Kate C. Wells. I put this on my January TBR. Look at me reading books off my TBR, y'all. I'm doing it. This is a book that I've seen all across booktube for years since this book came out and i've been wanting to read it for a while i had it on my kindle library i got it for free one day like years ago and i finally decided to pick it up and i'm so glad that i did it reminded me of i don't know what other people's for you pages on tiktok but um i get a lot of those like ads for like this app where you can watch these like shows and one of them just so happens to be like these werewolf like ridiculous <laughs> it's like soap opera shows and this is what that reminded me of honestly so this book starts out with una who is a woman and lives among these other werewolf shifters but she's never shifted before she's like 25 i want to say this book starts out with her shifting for the first time in front of all of her people and when she shifts she realizes like the alpha of her pack killian is her mate but he doesn't feel like a bond or anything and so he's like uh no you're not my mate like no I'm, no not happening so he rejects her in front of everybody and she is devastated her wolf is heartbroken she goes off into the woods and is in so much pain because of the heat that she's in she's in horrible pain and their um pack witch ends up across her and she tells the witch like sever the bond do anything i don't feel like he's ever gonna accept me so just sever it so that's what the witch does she severs the bond on her end but not on his so this book is him realizing that he's starting to feel this pull towards una and he's like I think I messed up. And there's some big groveling moments. He's realizing that Una is this strong, bad A woman. This was an addictive read. I could not put this book down for the life of me. I wanted to know what was going on, even how ridiculous and like fun. It was just so fun. It was a fun read, okay? And Una in here, I loved her character. She was so strong. She was injured when she was a child and she walks with a limp now and she has like all these scars up her legs. And like, man, she does not let that deter her determination like she does not let that affect her at all like she walks slower than a lot of people her wolf is smaller than a lot of other people's but she doesn't let that affect her negatively like this is who she is and she fully accepts and loves herself i love her so much for tropes in this one it's paranormal you have rejected mates um alpha hero werewolf shifters faded mates there is groveling galore throughout this book and of course disability representation with the heroine and her injured leg i really love this one i see why other people love it as well i can't wait to read the other books in the series there's even characters in this book that i'm like praying and hoping that they get a book because i want to read about like kennedy like i want kennedy's book the last three books i'm going to briefly mention because they're in a video that i uploaded yesterday so jess from peace love books invited a bunch of people asked a bunch of people on booktube to collaborate with her to do a historic romance reading vlog where we read a bunch of historic romances trying to like spark our love for historicals again which i thought was a fantastic idea so i picked up three historical romances and you can go check out that vlog to learn more about them i'll briefly mention them though i ended up picking up the first two Two books that are out in the McBrides of Montana series which are western romances that were really fun. The first one is Kit McBride Gets a Wife. Um, this is a mail order bride romance 
but uh, the heroine's employer is the mail order bride in question and she gets mistaken as the bride. That one was really fun. And I also read book number two, which is marrying off Morgan McBride, which is another mail order bride situation. But the hero has no idea that the heroine's coming. His sister ordered the mail order bride for him. It was really fun. I love the heroine here. She is like a baker and a cook and she's plus size. I loved reading about her character. And the last book that I have to mention is another book, a part of that vlog. This is The Bachelor Bargain by Madison Michaels. I could talk about this book all day long, just like Whispers of the Deep. That one and this one are my favorite books of the year so far. You can know more of my thoughts in my vlog from yesterday again, but this is so good. Our hero is a scarred hero who is kind of like the bad man in the ton. He worked his way up through like scheming people and like finding debts and stuff like that. Like, so he's not like a titled guy, but he is rich. Anyway, so our heroine in here, she's wanting to write this pamphlet, this weekly article exposing the wrongdoings of men in the ton because one of them ruined her friend's life and she supposedly ended her own life. The heroine doesn't believe that. She thinks that her friend was murdered. And so she wants um, this hero in here to help fund her article that she wants to write every single week, this newspaper she wants to write. He will agree as long as she agrees to train her his half-sister to be in society because he wants her to have like a fulfilling life, right? So <laughs> this book is so good. Our heroine and hero, their chemistry off the charts. There's fantastic disability representation. The heroine was injured when she was a child and she walks with a limp and uses a cane to walk. And I I loved her. I loved her so much. I love this hero too and how smitten he was with her, their banter, their relationship, the way they talk to each other. I love this book so much. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking about that book because I could talk about it for hours. So go check out that vlog if you wanna know what are my thoughts five stars for sure. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I've read so far in the first half of January. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, but if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any cowboy related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.